Hello, it's Jeanette with Geomazing Paper Crafts. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm back with another video tutorial, and this time I'm going to show you how to make this card. And this card is a uh, one of a set of cards that I'm making as a gift, a thank you card uh, set here. And look how sparkly it is. Yeah, a lot of bling going on in this card. And I am also going to show you how I made the envelope. Now this is kind of an odd shaped card. This is actually a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card. Okay, and it's blank on the inside. Okay, and I, I did make the matching envelope, but I didn't use the envelope punch board for this. You see this uh, straight edge here? I'm going to show you how to really easily make an envelope like this to match any odd size card. Just a little simple mathematical measurement that you need to know that you can make all the envelopes you want with a straight edge. Now the envelope punch board is a great tool to have and I have it and use it all the time, but it makes envelopes with this little miter here and that's good for, you know, if if you want to just you know make one card and then glue it but when you're making a set of cards you kind of want to have something uh, to you know like remove like adhesive to fold down and instead of putting two strips with this straight edge here you're only putting one strip okay so first of all let me show you how I made the card this card is using a wonderful stamp set called uh, here it is. <laughs> it's called Falling For You. It's from the Occasions Catalog. And I'm using some of these smaller elements here. I love this. I love using uh, uh, smaller elements and making my own kind of background for cards. And then I'm also going to just use one element from this stamp set called So In Love. And I'm just going to use this little leaf right here. Okay. And both of these are from the Occasions 2017 Catalog. So I'll have all the numbers uh, with links to my store uh, down below and in my blog. Okay, so this is a real simple card to make. I'm going to start with a piece of cardstock that measures eight and a half. Pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to take a regular piece of cardstock. Let me show you. Okay, this is a regular piece of cardstock here, and this is an eight and a half by eleven. Okay, um, and eight and a half inches. I'll just cut four and a half inches. I mean, four and a quarter inches off, and then I just fold it in half. I scored right at four and a quarter. Okay, and that's what kind of makes it an odd size because you know you have five inches four inches, four and a half, but this is actually four and a quarter. So I needed a specialty envelope, which I will show you how to do later. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold this card and I'm going to use my bone folder to crease that fold since I scored it right down the middle. Okay. And now what I have done with the stamps is I've actually already adhered them on my block. So what I did was I, I positioned them on my card and then I took my stamp -a jig just this part of the tool. I didn't need the other part, you know, that sheet, that transfer sheet. I didn't need that part. So once I had that, uh, the stamps positioned in the corner there where I wanted them, then I just went with my clear block and I, I used clear block D for the three floor flowers that are in that stamp set and then I am going to be able to stamp it down. Now let me show you some of these colors first. This is like a pink uh, rose color and then we've got some, I think that's uh, in Island Indigo with some lighter marker and this is Calypso, no this is Watermelon Wonder, this is um, I think that's Night of Navy, and this one is Elegant Eggplant, and all of these are filled in with a lighter color marker. Okay, so today I'm going to be making uh, one that's kind of goldish yellow, okay, and I'm going to be using Delightful Dijon as my outline, okay, so I'm just going to go tap, tap, tap on my, on my ink pad. And then I'm just going to line the card up in the corner of my stamp -a majig and then I'm going to stamp. And then I'm going to turn the card, tap, tap, tap on my stamp, on my ink pad, turn the card, 
and stamp. And then I'm going to turn the card. Tap, tap, tap. I think I have shown this uh, little method that I use in another card several months ago. But this is one of my favorite ways to be a little symmetrical with my cards, making sure that everything is lined up straight. And you can also use um, any stamp positioning tool. And that's really the only thing that I'm going to have that's really perfectly symmetrical in here. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and color in these little flowers. And I'm going to use some So Saffron uh, marker. This is the Stampin' Write marker. And I'm going to use the brush tip. And I'm going to try to speed this up for you on the video so you don't have to sit and watch me fill all these in. Okay. Okay, so now I'm done filling all of these in. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp some leaves on here. Um, and what I'm going to use is some old olive. Now you notice I have this little ink blot here, this little um, ink spot they call them. Um, they come uninked and you just add your own ink to it. And you see how I have that little leaf attached to the top? Well, I only have uh, very few of the little small blocks here. I probably should get some more. But I also discovered that if you just adhere your little stamps to the top of this, this is like having an extra acrylic block. And since I'm going to be using the uh, Old Olive, I have it uh, attached to the lid of the Old Olive ink spot. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to just randomly stamp I'm not going to try to be really, really neat or too symmetrical with this. I know exactly where I want to stamp this little leaf, and I'm just going to stamp them right there on the corners, right, be, right in between these two flowers here. I probably need to ink this up a little bit more. I've been using a lot of old olive. Okay, there we go. And um, <clears throat> on this little block, this is the A block, I have this little sprig that's from that stamp set. And I'm just going to go ahead and stamp a little sprig just in between these two flowers on the edges. Okay. And that's my greens. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp um, with this little bud. It's got a little two little sprigs sticking out of it. I think that's a bud. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and stamp that with rose red because I think I like that color combination. Okay, and I am just going to just stamp on either side of this little flower in the corner. And you can just go wild and crazy if you want. Stamp as many of these as you want. Um, I just kind of like to be semi-symmetrical with this. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp some more of these little uh, rose red buds kind of in between the, the leaf here or on either side of the leaf. I'm not trying to be too careful about being symmetrical, just kind of in the general area. Just kind of adding some really pretty color to this card. Isn't that pretty so far? I just love it, love it, love it. Okay, so now I'm going to put a little bit of orange in here. Um, I have this little pumpkin pie, and I've got a little st a little stamp adhered to the lid of this one here. And I'm just going to put a little splash of orange in here, just kind of above that little green sprig. And then I might just go ahead and put a little sprig of orange in every corner of this card. Okay, and now let me go do some doodling on here. Um, I like that leaf, but I, I kind of want to add a little bit more dimension to the leaf. So I'm going to take my darker green. This is always artichoke marker, and I'm just going to outline that stem and drag it right into the leaf and just kind of uh, make that middle vein down each of these leaves and it takes almost no time at all. You can be neat, neater than me because I'm doing this in a hurry, so I'm kind of not being as neat as I normally would be. Okay. 
There we go. So now I have this little um, stem going through, this little darker uh, line vein going through each of the leaves. I hope I can. you can see that. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is just take some Wink of Stella and I'm going to add some sparkle to each one of these uh, flowers. I'll speed up the camera so that you can you don't have to sit and watch me sparkle up each one of these flowers. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of sparkle to each one of these little pink buds. Can you see that sparkle? Love that. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and stamp the Thank You Sentiment, and for that I am going to use my little stamp positioning tool here. I've got it already positioned on here because I was doing several of them. Now, since this card is perfectly square, you have the choice of either stamping so that your card opens this way or opens this way. And I think I kind of like the, when the card opens like this. That way you can have all, you can write on this whole thing, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put my, uh, my card right here. I'm gonna just put some uh, removable adhesive there. I'm gonna use some basic black on my thank you. And that thank you comes from this stamp set called One Big Meaning, okay? I'm using this thank you right here, okay? <clears throat> and, oops, let's see, what am I doing here? Oh, <laughs> I gotta take the sheet off of here, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna take and just ink that up really good making sure this is right in the corner I've already got it positioned and of course you can use your stamp on jig to position this if you want to okay and here is my thank you all right and now I'm going to just add a little bit more bling to this by using I gotta put this away somewhere here I'm going to just use a jelly uh, jelly roll sparkle pen this one uh, is like a glitter pen I think I got this at jo Joann's. I'm not exactly sure. But I kind of like to outline that vein uh, of the leaf just to give that a little bit of sparkle. Okay. I know Stampin' Up! doesn't sell this, but I, I thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and use this in my video. That way, if you've got a um, if you've got one of these little glitter pens, it's going to work really nice here by outlining this little vein and also I'm going to outline the word just to give that a little sparkle too. You could probably, if you're really, really neat, you could do this with your Wink of Stella pen, but I find that the brush is a little too thick for this and I like this little ballpoint. It just gives me enough glitter, puts down enough glitter for me to just have a little bit of bling on this sentiment. Okay, can you see how much bling there is here? I love it. And so I'm pretty much done with the card, and you could add more to it if you want, but I think this is just, uh, you know, I think this is just right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to stop right there, and we're going to go ahead and make the matching envelope for this. Now, if you use just reg, you can make an envelope with any kind of paper and I just kind of want to show you that if you use copy paper um, that that's well and good but you have to know that copy paper is kind of thin and you'll be able to see what it is on you can, you can see through the card and that's okay if that's what you want <laughs> um, but I didn't like that so um, I would suggest that if you are fortunate enough to get the Inside the Lines paper, uh, designer series paper, free from during celebrations, you can use some of that too. You see how it looks like this envelope is lined? And of course you could even color it beforehand. Okay, and I like this paper because it is white on one side. It's only printed on the one side. Now most of all of Stampin' Up's paper, does designer series paper, is printed on two sides. So if you want to stamp your envelope, you kind of want to have a light, uh, you know, like a light colored envelope, all one, you know, just white, just kind of plain so that, you know, your stamping will stand out. So I would suggest using designer series paper that just is printed on one side. <clears throat> or if you want to, you could 
and if you're like me and have a lot of scrap, um, not necessarily scrap, but scrapbook paper, it's only printed on one side, okay? And so it's white, and it is heavier than copy paper. You can't see through it. See that? I can't see through it. So it makes a really good envelope to stamp on. And I have tons of this because I've been a paper crafter for quite a long time. A lot longer than I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So like I said, use what you have. Uh, you could even use cardstock if you want. Um, lightweight cardstock is, is probably going to be best for the envelope since it doesn't add any extra weight. So let me tell you, I have uh, measured this to ha have a really nice sized envelope. This sheet of paper measures six inches by nine and a half inches. So that means you could get two out of a out of a twelve by twelve sheet of cardstock for this size card, which is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in my scoreboard. And let me make sure it's positioned where you can see the numbers, hopefully. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to score it on the long side. This is the nine and a half inch side. You're going to score it at one and one quarter inch. And that is what's going to make your flap. And then you score it at five and three quarters. Okay. Now, this is how this is how I measured it. Um, I wanted that one and a quarter inch flap, but I didn't want this to be straight on. I didn't want it to fit so perfectly. I wanted a little wiggle room. So that means I had to go down about maybe a quarter of an inch and that brought me down to five and three quarters of an inch. And so when I fold it over, it's not going to fit all the way to the top here. It's going to give me like a three, uh, uh, maybe about a five eighths of an inch gap up here. Okay, so when you're measuring your card, you double your card and add just one inch. So it's four and a quarter plus four and a quarter was eight and a half plus one inch would make it nine and a half. And that's how I came up with the long ways measurement. Now for the short ways measurement, I took and, and I added one and three quarters of an inch. Okay, and that way I could score it at three quarters of an inch on each side okay that's going to give me a little bit of wiggle room and then i'm going to score it over here it's going to be three quarters of an inch in but it, it turns out to be five and a quarter on this side okay and that is going to give me a little bit of wiggle room just in case you want to add some embellishments your envelope's not going to be so tight and that's all the scoring that we need okay All right, now you're going to need to cut some of these pieces. So I'm not going to use my paper snips because they're kind of small. I have a, a, a larger pair of scissors here so that I can cut the... I want to cut the score line completely off on this side and this side of my paper. Okay, get in there a little bit better. Okay, and now on this side making sure I'm cutting that score line completely off just on the bottom and right here okay a little bit more on this side here all right and on the top here on the short side you want to do the same thing I'm just cutting off the score line completely And on this side too. You don't want to see any of the score lines on those edges. Okay, very good. So this is what your uh, your paper should look like. And now I'm going to fold. Let me get rid of these scraps here. I'm going to go ahead and fold this flap over like this. Okay, that's going to be kind of a pretty liner, isn't it? Okay, I like that it looks like you've lined the, the envelope when you do it with some, you know, of your old scrapbook paper. And this scrapbook paper is not very expensive at all. You know what, I noticed that I left some of my score line on here. So I want it, I want to take that completely off. It makes your envelope um, set 
much nicer. Okay, so now you're going to fold these side flaps over and don't panic. I'm not going to be gluing them <laughs> like that. These are going to be tucked in the middle, but the reason why I folded them over that bottom flap here is because when I open it up and I close it, uh, that kind of ensures that none of this flap is going to be hanging outside on the edge. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and fold this over, this top flap over like that. Okay, and then I'm going to round some edges here. Whoop, sorry about that guys. I didn't realize that my... Um, my camera stopped on me so I kind of had to start all over and I got to this point here where I was rounding the edges and I'm going to be using my Project Life corner rounder for this and I'm going to just round the edges on the flap okay and then I'm going to round the edges here on the bottom part too okay like that and then I'm going to just round the edges just on these two flaps right here. So I'm going to fold that in like that and just make sure that these edges are nice and round. <clears throat> and of course you're going to do a nice neat job with your envelope too. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and adhere this envelope together and I'm going to just uh, bring in my silicone craft sheet and I'm going to use some snail adhesive and I'm just going to put snail adhesive down this flap on this edge here and on this edge here okay and then I'm gonna just kind of walk it up to make sure that that is going to be nice and straight and there's nothing sticking out on either side of this edge here and so to make this uh, a self-adhesive envelope I'm just gonna put a little strip of tear and tape here so that when my recipient is ready to mail her thank you card she all she has to do is just peel that top layer off okay and when you put the card in here <clears throat> you put it in like that you can't see through it really nice okay so use up that scrapbook paper use it use it for envelopes if you aren't doing that already okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is is pretty much the same thing that I did with the card and I'm just gonna decorate the corner of the card let me bring my stamp on jig back in I'm gonna bring my uh, delightful Dijon uh, ink pad in I'm going to just go ahead and stamp it. Make sure you've got it on the corner that you want to stamp it on. And just just on the corner there. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in my leaf. You know, you don't have to be as fancy um, with this as you were on the card. <clears throat> you don't have to color it in. You don't have to use all the Wink of Stella if you don't want to. Okay, I'm just going to um, pretty much put some of the same designs that I've got on the card. In the same, in this, you know, a sim similar spots, like right here, and right there, and right there, and right there. And I could stop there if I want, but I think I'm going to add just a little bit of that pumpkin pie with the sprig, kind of like I have it right here on the corners. And I'll just go ahead and put it right here on that side, and on that side, and maybe one right here. And I think I'm done with my the corner of my card isn't that cute like I said you can make the corner as fancy as you did the card by coloring it in but I think I think I'm just gonna leave this envelope just the way it is so I hope that I've taught you something I hope that you'll try this you know um, use your little ink spots as little stamp acrylic blocks um, in case you don't have a whole lot of blocks like I don't have a whole lot of blocks I just have the ones that I use all the time and then you know I also have my stamp positioning tools my homemade one and the other one uh, and the one that my aunt gave me <laughs> uh, several months ago but look at all these beautiful colors see with the matching envelopes and this is going to make a gorgeous set as my gift for a friend of mine okay so once again, if you need any of the tools and supplies that I used in this video, please go to my website at www.geoamazingpapercrafts.stampinup.net. I hope to be your demonstrator if you don't already have one. So I'm Jeanette with Geoamazing Paper Crafts, and you make it a great day. 
拜。